Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I want to talk about uniques. In specific, normal uniques. In more specific, I want to go over what normal uniques are worth upgrading to their exceptional version. But why would you do this? Well, it can be difficult to come across exceptional uniques on a natural playthrough of Nightmare, and some normal uniques possess some pretty awesome affixes. Certainly not all, but some are definitely worth consideration for an upgrade should you be in such a predicament. Which ones are they? Let's go find out. Before we begin, let's briefly discuss upgrading items in general. Rare, unique, and set items can be upgraded from their normal version to exceptional, and from exceptional version to elite, using the cube. The recipes differ across the board, but for upgrading normal unique armor, you'll need one towel, one shale, and one perfect diamond. And for normal unique weapons, you'll need a ral, a soul, and a perfect emerald. Wands, orbs, rings, and amulets are omitted from upgrading in general, but all other equipment is viable. When upgrading an item, its base damage or defense will now take on the base of its upgraded version. As well as the assassin's kick damage on boots, the paladin's smite damage on shields, and all belts will receive the upgraded potion slot to 16. Affixes will remain unaffected, but percent added damage or defense will now reflect the values of the upgraded base. Do note that the required strength and dexterity will also increase to their respective base item. And there is a plus 5 increase to its original required level for normals to exceptionals, and a plus 7 for exceptionals to elites. So make sure your character or mercenary are actually able to use the upgraded item prior to committing. Weapons and armor will be judged a bit differently. Both will depend on their affixes, but weapons will also highly depend on their relative damage increase. In using a few exceptional uniques as a reference point, one-hander max damage will need to be around the 70s, 80s at a minimum, and two-hander max damage will need to be around 120, 130 for a minimum. For example, the Nasher has two awesome affixes, but its general damage going into Nightmare would be underpowered immediately. Armor upgrades, though, are highly subjective per your character or build as the added defense may or may not be necessary. Also note the upgraded defense will be re-rolled based against its upgraded base's defense range. But the differences from normal to exceptional are large enough to be considered a good boost for most melee characters. I'll go through the items by category, highlight the best, but also throw in a couple desperation items should you really be in a pickle. Lastly, just note most candidates could be considered good or bad, but are largely subjective depending on your build, class, or specific situation. Okay, that's enough of an intro. Let's get into the nitty gritty. In starting off with axes, straight away we're going into one of the better melees to upgrade, the humongous giant axe. The damage transfers very well, particularly with the added 8 to 25 damage and plus 20 to 30 strength. Keeping 33% crushing blow is a major win. However, the drawback is the 20% requirements will increase the required exceptional strength from 125 to 150. Another axe to consider is the Chieftain Battle Axe, which has the plus 100% damage transfer. The plus 20% attack speed keeps it out of the slow category, increasing overall DPS, and it's always a bonus to keep all res going. If you're feeling a bit desperate, Brain Hue Great Axe has a solid DPS transfer with its plus 14 minimum damage, as well as a couple mana perks. Or Rake Scar War Axe which would primarily be for straight up DPS, but keeping poison res is always nice. Moving on to swords, a few stand out as solid. Starting with the Patriarch Greatsword. It gets a great damage transfer, with blind target and plus 10 strength carrying forward. Just watch out for that new required strength though. You could also consider Ripsaw Flamberge, which gets a solid DPS transfer while keeping mana leech and essentially bleeds enemies on every hit. The best one-hander would likely be Colwyn's Point Warsword, which gets the best damage transfer and arguably the better affixes, with plus one to all skills, attack speed, and hit recovery. If you're really hurting though, you could consider Hell Plague Longsword. Its damage upgrade is a bit on the lower end, but its swing rate and affixes definitely transfer well, particularly the leeching, fire damage, and plus two to fire skills if you fall into that category. Also keep in mind, even if you're not using swords, your Act 5 Mercenary does. An upgraded Ripsaw or a Patriarch would make him quite happy going through Nightmare. I'll put that to good use. Heading over to Poles and Spears, there are a couple considerations. The Grim Reaper War Scythe is one, which only includes 20% enhanced damage, but provides plus 15 to minimum damage, 
then 100% deadly strike on top of it, doing double damage with every single one of its fast swings, and a little mana leech is always helpful. On the exact opposite end, Wostave Hellbeard does have some crazy affixes, including open wounds, slows target, blinds target, minus enemy defense, and freezes target, all of which transfer very well into Nightmare. The only drawback is its minimal damage increase. Wostave would be great for the Act 2 Mercenary though. But if your Merc is starving, you might consider the Battle Branch Poleaxe, which is basically a DPS life leecher. And if you're really looking for some extra stabby stabby, the Tanner Gorod Pike is really the only option. Its attack speed flat out sucks, but its damage transfers well, and you'll keep some added life and fire res. And in wrapping up the melees, we have the Blunt Force Traumatizers. Ironstone Warhammer gets a crazy damage boost with plus 10 strength and added attack rating, but its swing rate is quite slow, so you better have some added attack speed to counter. On the exact opposite side, we have Steel Driver Great Maul. Its DPS is laughably insane, but doesn't get much more than that. However, the minus 50% requirements means its required strength will only be 85. What? This is a total sleeper right here. And we'll end the melees with the best. Bone Snap Maul. If there's ever a normal melee to upgrade, this is it. Outside of Steel Driver, the 300% enhanced damage is the highest by a country mile. Adding another 100% damage to Undead, 30 Fire and Cold Res, with the main attraction being the 40% Crushing Blow. This thing absolutely wrecks, and if you have added attack speed, it wrecks even more. Jumping over to some missiles, most will be dependent on your Amazon's build, but a couple will transfer pretty well. Blast Bark Long Warbow's damage transfers well, but is most useful if you're using Exploding Arrow. Same with Doomslinger Repeating Crossbow. The DPS goes over well, but is most useful when taking advantage of its 35 piercing via multi-shotting or strafing. Hellcast Heavy Crossbow gets a solid DPS transfer with its 20% attack speed, but otherwise only the fire res will really carry over as the exploding bolts will likely be overridden by your own skills at that point. And now for armor. Keep in mind the primary reason to upgrade armor is for defense, which is completely up to your character's discretion. Outside of that, the only things to consider are that belts receive the exceptional potion slots, which is definitely helpful, and kick and smite damage can receive pretty fair upgrades. And in starting with body armor, Heavenly Garb Light Plate is a solid upgrade, offering a great defense boost along with keeping some good affixes. And the exceptional required strength is only 55, making this a functional upgrade for most every character. Several others get a great defense boost, but only one or two affixes will carry over such as Gold Skin Full Plate Mail, carrying over its 35 All Res and Gold Find, should you need it. Rock Fleece Field Plate carries over a 10% damage reduction, and Rattle Cage Gothic Plate gets a little snuffed on defense, but Crushing Blow and Monster Flea will definitely carry. Also keep in mind, all of these would be beneficial for your Mercenary as well. For shields, it's pretty slim pickings one to consider is Steel Clash Kite Shield if you're rocking a Paladin. The defense transfers well, and it has good added blocking and 15 all res. However, if you're specifically looking for defense and resistances, the Ward Gothic Shield grants 30 to 50 all res, and Breveric Keep Tower Shield has the 75 fire res, and both gain solid defense upgrades. The Swordback Hold Spike Shield gets the best Paladin Smite upgrade, but outside of open wounds, the affixes are a bit lacking. Most gloves will have solid affixes, but their defense percentages are pretty shallow. However, it is still an upgrade relative to its normal version, so let's run through them. Frostburn Gauntlets will provide the best defense boost and keeping cold damage, 5% enhanced damage, and a boost to mana is always great. Mage Fist gets a moderate defense boost, but being it's catered to casters, it may or may not be worth it. Chance Guards is really only worth upgrading if you really want the defense with your magic find. And Blood Fist is obviously the lower end of relative defense, but has solid melee affixes to continue on in Nightmare. Boots, on the other hand, can receive decent percentages. Tear Haunch Greaves is a good choice as it gets a solid defense upgrade, and keeping its movement speed and 10 all res would be helpful. It also receives the best kick upgrade. Goblin Toe Light Plated Boots also get a solid defense boost, granted only one affix carries over, 
but Crushing Blow is a doozy. And if you really want to keep your fire res up, Hot Spur has you covered. Helms are a bit all over, as most either have great defense but lacking affixes, or lacking affixes with great defense. The Undead Crown stands out as the exception as it gets a great defense boost and its affixes definitely carry over. You'll just have to ignore the plus 3 skeleton mastery if you're not a necromancer. Dusk Deep Full Helm is another which gets a pretty solid defense boost while keeping 15 all res and 8 to max damage. And if you're really hurting, Face of Horror Mass transfers some decent affixes, notably 10 all res, but its defense is on the lower end being it doesn't have any percent enhanced. Belts are interesting as there could be an argument for any one of them, as they all get relatively solid defense boosts and upgrade to 16 potion slots, except for Blade Buckle since it already has 16 slots. The affixes are more catered to builds though, but Gold Wrap Heavy Belt is good if you need more defense when magic finding. Night Smoke Belt is good for mana users, including 10 all res. Snake Cord continues your replenish life and poison res. And last but not least, the Lanaimo Sash, which carries over a couple decent affixes for mana users. So there they are, the best normal uniques worth the consideration for upgrading to their exceptional version. Some are obviously much better than others, and several are highly dependent on your character, build, or playstyle. Always take your weapon's enhanced damage into consideration, and always make sure you are able to use the upgraded version prior to committing. And don't forget about combos, like adding attack speed to heavy hitters, or adding crushing blow to some of the fast strikers. And lastly, have fun! Never have buyer's remorse, as many of these items can be quite common to come across. So upgrade away. But feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Was there anything I missed that you would upgrade for a Nightmare character? Remember to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, and also remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo and other gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.